G'day guys, Ian here, and today we are cleaning out our snake tubs. Now guys, if you are new to this channel and you haven't already done so, please do us a favor, subscribe to the channels, turn on those post notifications, and welcome to Cookies Critters. So guys, Part of the daily routine here is to go through and check all the snake tubs, make sure that the snakes have fresh water, and make sure that they haven't defecated in their, uh, in their tub. So guys, let's get into it. So guys, to clean out all of our tubs, we simply need a few things. Now, the most important thing that we need are rubber gloves. Guys, it is always important whenever you are handling animal waste that you do protect yourself. So guys, get yourself plenty of rubber gloves because you will go through a lot. Now, the next things that we need are cleaning agents. So we've got our F10 dilution here. I know it's a, an awesome little MSDS safety sheet just there, little F10, and plenty of paper towel. Now, along with that, especially in the larger tubs, you will need fresh butcher's paper. Now, we've got tons of this stuff. We buy it in like 20 kilo bundles. And finally, obviously, because you are cleaning, you do want to replenish their water. Now, what we have here is tap water, which has been boiled and allowed to cool. And this way we are evaporating the chlorine. Now, here in Sydney, the drinking water, the quality of the drinking water is excellent, but we do want to remove that chlorine. Now, to go through and do all of our snake tubs uh, with fresh water that's been treated with a water conditioner would be quite a time consuming process and quite costly. So guys, simply boiling your water, cooling it and letting it stand is an ideal way to, uh, to remove uh, any trace elements that you want from the water. So guys, let's get cleaning. Okay guys, so uh, in this situation with this tub here, I'll uh, bring the camera out a bit. The, uh, the tub is a little bit more soiled than uh, what I can just simply wipe down. So this is where having spare tubs will always come in handy because we can just simply do a tub change and then uh, clean the tub at the end of the day.
Okay guys, so that tub that was heavily soiled, we've uh, just sprayed the entire tub with F10. We are going to allow that tub to have the 30 minute contact time that it needs to kill off any bacteria. And uh, we will put it aside and finish that at the end of this uh, cleaning session. So guys, what I did forget to mention is obviously after uh, cleaning that last tub that was heavily soiled, uh, it's important that you change your gloves. Obviously there's no point of wearing gloves to j just protect yourself, it is to protect the animals as well. So you don't want cross contamination, make sure after uh, you soil your gloves, you need to change them before you handle the next animal. So guys, you're probably wondering what these locks are for. Obviously, I'm not concerned about the snakes getting out of their tub and escaping. It's more so that we do have young kids in the house and very young nephews. Uh, we don't want anyone just walking in and opening a tub and getting bitten by one of our snakes. Uh, I do trust my snakes. I know that they are uh, very tolerant of being handled, but depending on what time of the, uh, the week it is, if it's uh, around feeding day or just after feeding, Obviously a snake can be a little bit cranky, so guys, uh, these are just to protect our kids. So with these little tubs, we do use paper towel. Uh, it fits in their tub nicely, uh, and it's very easy to keep clean. Big difference between a, uh, a hashling poo and a full grown carpet. So this one here, it's uh, it's not actually the uh, snakes soil the uh, the paper. This is more so from feeding time, where the the rat's been dragged around and uh, bled out a little bit. Okay, so this is really common for uh, for snakes. Uh, obviously, a bit of snake shed skin as well, but a lot of snakes will actually use their uh, their water bowl as a toilet. Um, makes a bit of a poo soup. But uh, guys, obviously, once we ditch the waste out of this, it is important that we let uh, the F10 that we're going to spray on this have that 30 minutes contact time. So we'll give the uh, snake a fresh bowl and put this one aside while we're cleaning.
Okay guys, so uh, this little girl is a perfect example. Uh, that coiled S shape that she's doing is a uh, defensive posture. She doesn't want to be, uh, to be touched. If I put my hand in there, she will bite. Uh, she may just give a, a warning tag, but let's uh, respect her and uh, we'll get the hook. So guys, in most situations, once you hook a snake and you take them out of their environment, they are a lot more docile and easy to handle. Okay, so guys, as you can see, once she's uh, out of her tub with the hook, she is quite easy to handle, so she will actually let me clean her tub. So guys, out of all the cleaning, these two tubs, a uh, couple of hides and a bowl are the only ones that actually need a deep, thorough clean. So the F10 has uh, had its 30 minutes contact time. Uh, we'll take them outside, give them a, uh, a good scrub and a good hose down, and then they'll be ready to go for, uh, for the next time we clean. Guys, that is the cleaning done. Now the final step is make sure that you clean your hands. Guys, give your hands all the way down to your elbow a thorough sanitize. You have been handling reptiles, you have been handling animal waste, make sure you do clean yourself afterwards. Now guys, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you do 
hit that like button if you haven't already done so. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications. That way you won't miss a coming video. And as always, guys, if you've got them, keep your beard treated and your snakes heated. <laughs>